Welcome back everyone. If you could please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So you've probably noticed right off the bat that things look way different today than normal. I'm here in my studio with this large case in front of me. And the reason for that is because in today's video, I'm going to go over how I travel with all of my gear. The reason is I've been getting a lot of questions about that as I've been posting about my travels on Instagram. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you what I have in my light modifier case, which is sometimes also the case where I put my tripod and my light stands and what I have in my lighting case where all the lights and accessories go. And then most importantly, how I check all of this in at the airport and don't have to pay any bag fees. You'll definitely want to stay around till the end of the video to learn about that trick. So let's start off by talking about what's in this particular case. So on this side closest to you, I have two Allen Chrome indirect strip soft boxes and then they're about one by five feet or give or take each, but I'll put the actual measurements on the screen. Then I've got an Allen Chrome 150 centimeter indirect Rotolux softbox. Sometimes I use my 190 centimeter softbox and put it in in that location. The reason why you might see things looking a little bit of a mess is because I found that if I use the bags that the strips come in, um, then they end up taking up too much space and I'm able to sort of nestle things better if I just have them out there uh, in the case. The weird thing about this case from SKB is that it has straps on it and those straps are on the side closest to you, uh, which means that when I'm packing it up, I usually fold that side over onto this side, uh, which actually main, means that it's uh, wheels up, so to speak, instead of wheels down. So it always looks upside down. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is what's on this side of the case. And now that's where we'll get into that airing my dirty laundry, so to speak. Right here, I have two shoes. Now, often when I'm traveling, I will wear a pair of shoes and then I will put a pair of shoes in here. So maybe I'll have my gym shoes on uh, for the airplane and maybe I'll have my casual shoes on, uh, have, have them in the case or vice versa, that sort of thing. Because there's always room in this case uh, to stick these. So there we go. Now, next, I have the grid for um, that big Octobox. So I don't always use grids, but I just like to have this in case I need it. Maybe I'll be going to a studio with a shiny floor or all white walls that are close in and I'll need to control the light a little bit more. So that's where this comes in really handy. The next thing here, I've got uh, a small one by three foot or 30, 35 by 90 centimeter strip softbox. I actually have two of these in the case. Um, the other one is right here. So I usually use one of them for my hair light. Sometimes I use one of them as my main light. Then the next thing is I have this 70 centimeter um, Octobox here, deep Octobox that Ellen Chrome makes, which I use as my stand-in for a uh, white beauty dish. And then I can take the diffusion out and um, use it in place of a silver beauty dish. So it's actually quite versatile. Then I've got grids for the small strips. Usually I'll use one on the hair light because I need to make sure that the light from the hair light can't end up on the background. And so that's why I use one uh, most of the time. Then I've got this Matthews road rags system. Now I'm always confused sometimes because they make something called road flags too. Um, but anyway, uh, the road rags, this is a 24 by 36 inch kit. Um, essentially what you can do is you can make um, white or black or translucent flags out of, out of what's in here. And then I use those to control the light on set. A lot of times I'll use foam core in the studio, but this is way better on location. Although this is very expensive. So if you don't have to travel, I really would suggest using those 20 by 30 inch pieces of black and white foam core instead. Um, so next in here, I've got a 105 centimeter, which I think is 41 inch white Ellen Chrome umbrella. And I keep this in here just in case I need another main light, but also because in the demos that I do a lot of the time, uh, at least when I start off, I like to start off with a very simple basic modifier so that um, it's something approachable that, that everybody might own. Then I have some hardware in here. So just in case, I never know 
uh, what the studio has where I'm going. Oftentimes what I do is I end up getting stands. Um, well, I usually don't travel with stands. I usually get them uh, from the studio that I'm going to. But just in case I need it, I keep this grip arm and uh, grip, uh, 40 inch grip arm and grip head in here in case I need a little miniature boom for um, usually for the hair light or possibly for the main light. It doesn't take up a lot of space and so it's there. And then I also have this Kupo offset arm, which is probably one of the coolest things um, that I have as far as grip goes. And it allows me to um, put this on the end of a stand and then get my light about 14 inches off center. And that will allow me to put it in the beauty dish position and then shoot under it uh, with my camera. So this is a great uh, piece of kit. Now I do have some extra space in here usually, and that means that I can probably uh, put light stands in here or a tripod in here. I might not need all of the modifiers for the, for the particular shoot I'm doing. And if that is the case, then I just sort of take things out and add things back in. So I don't always have to get the stands on location. And last but not least, I have four TSA slips, which I've been um, collecting this year as I've been traveling uh, to all sorts of different cities. So uh, in the next part, I'm gonna show you my lighting case that I put all the lights in, and let's go ahead and get started with that. I didn't get that. Could you try again? No, because my knees hurt. <sighs> Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. I am. All right, so this is my Tenba Air Attaché 3220W. And I'll go ahead and open it up for you guys. We've got our second angle going on here so you can see sort of like a cooking camera, a uh, cooking show. Uh, there are two straps in here that are Velcroed in. They keep the lid in, frozen in place. I'm gonna release them. They're just Velcroed in. And that way you guys won't have the uh, um, lid in your way for this main camera here. Oh, and maybe is visible there. Uh, in the lid on one side, I have, um, I have gels. So you guys can see, I have a Ziploc bag full of various gels. On the other side, I have all of my gobos for my optical snoot. Um, that's what just fell out a second ago with some of them. So um, all of these little discs can be placed in there to project uh, different shapes onto the subject or the background. So uh, that's what's happening basically. So um, I'll go ahead now and release or flip the lid back over. All right, so let's talk about what's inside. So the biggest thing are the lights. So I'll go ahead and take those out now uh, one by one. So the, I have three ELB, Ellen Chrome ELB 500 mono lights. They're capable of doing TTL and high speed sync. And so, um, and they have LED modeling lights. So they all have seven inch grid reflectors on them. Um, the reason for that is so that I can use grids in them if I want to. Although I'm realizing that I don't have grids in here at the moment in a traditional sense that fit in there. Anyway, I'll go ahead and set them aside. So we'll go, I'll set them on the sides uh, that they come out on. So there's one, two, and then this one in particular, before I take it out, um, this is a power bank that goes to the next lights. Um, I'll just sit that over here for just a second. Um, and I'll sit this aside as well for a second. So we'll get this next light out of here. All right, now the other three lights that I have in this case are Ellen Chrome ones. And these are 131 watt second um, battery powered mono lights. They're very small and compact, which makes them really valuable uh, for me, especially in packing it in this case. And one of the things is the base screws off the bottom and you can, um, you can just unscrew it. I'll screw it on really quick so you guys can see how easily it goes on and comes off. So it's on there. It's, it's coming right off. So the main good thing about this is I can store them in a very compact space. And um, then I just take these and stick them over in this corner over here um, with their friends. So I'll go ahead and take these three out of here. 
All right. Okay. Oh, and there's a little frosted dome diffuser that's also a protector for this glass dome and the flash tube. Okay. Oh, and on them is this rubber gasket, which is an adapter that allows them to go into the standard Ellen Chrome Octobox ring. So it's all very nice and compact. So that's one thing I really like about them. This thing I pulled out earlier is a power bank um, for the Ellen Chrome One. So the Ellen Chrome One can fire 750 full power flashes with its internal battery. If you add this to it, um, you can fire um, 150% of that. So I think that's around um, 375 plus 750, 1125 plus 750, 1875. Hopefully I did that right. 1875 full power flashes if you plug this into the light. So I have one of these in my camera bag and one of them in my lighting kit. Um, and I own two of them total uh, for the three lights. So I can always keep going. This, well, under here, is my optical snoot. I'll put these aside for a second. So the optical snoot allows me to project any shape onto the subject or the background, like I said earlier when I was talking about the gobos. Um, it has a lens that goes on the front of it, and in this case, it is this uh, bootleg Young Nuo uh, 50 millimeter uh, lens. So it's like the Canon Nifty 50, only it's $30 and completely plastic but it doesn't have any chromatic aberration, so that's very good. Around that, I had a roll of gaffer tape. So um, every place, there is something useful, basically. All right, so these things right here are deflector discs that Ellen Crow makes. If you combine them with one of these stems, you can um, basically screw this onto the deflector disc, like this, and then you can take this and put it into the umbrella hole on um, any of the lights. So there's one right there. So um, this would allow you to turn any hard reflector or softbox without diffusion um, into a beauty dish, essentially. I'll go ahead and act it out really quick so you can get the idea. Should have done this from the beginning, sorry. All right, so this just slides right in to the umbrella hole, and now it is acting like that centered disc in any, um, any beauty dish. So um, a lot of times I'll take that 70 centimeter deep octa and take the diffusion out and then stick this in, and then that creates a 27 inch or 70 centimeter um, beauty dish in effect. So, okay, I'll take these and set them aside. All right, let's see. All right. Okay, so this next bag right here, guess what's in here? There are six, I believe, different transmitters uh, that go work with the Ellen Chrome system that work for different cameras. This one is for a Sony camera. Um, I have them in for here for Nikon and Canon as well, and it's what I use during the workshop so that people can uh, take pictures, essentially. Um, also, right here, I have a backup version for that. It's uh, two of the cheapest transmitters that Ellen Crow makes, um, and they don't work very well, so I rarely, if ever, use them, but they're just sort of in here as my deep backup, so to speak. This USB thing is some thing that let you control the flashes in olden times from the computer. I guess I'm just keeping it in here for when I sell it one day. Um, all right, so this is a nine foot, I believe, extension cord with three grounded plug outlets. And this will allow me, of course, to plug the lights in and get a little extra distance. Um, this is something new that I bought recently, so I have three of these. It's just a set of barn doors that I bought on uh, Amazon for about $30, and they clip on the front of the Octobox rings. And then the good thing, not the Octobox rings, they clip on the front of the seven inch reflector and uh, they have a grid inside which is detachable. Um, and they also have colored gel plates. They're magnetic things. Um, well, they're metal, I think, or they're magnetic. One of these is magnetic. Oh, I see it there. So there's magnets on here. So basically, if you slide this in here and then drop it down, 
it locks into place with the magnets and now the filter is, is there in place until you need to take it off. So, um, so I bought three of these and then they all have their own set of gels, which I think is green, yellow, blue, and red. So I have three of each. So those just sort of sit in here and I've been experimenting doing these sort of hard light or film noir looks lately. So I, I've kept them in here for that purpose. Then of course over here I have those three things um, that are all there to uh, go on the bottom of the uh, Ellen Chrome lights. I also have a pocket knife uh, that Ellen Chrome gave me, a Swiss army tool, if you will. And of course it has all of the requisite little things that you might need um, to fix stuff. So screwdrivers and knives and all of those things. I thought that was a great, a great and clever gift because every lighting case I think needs a tool uh, box of some kind. So, um, so that's what's hiding in that section. Um, I also have one of these, which is a cube for charging the Ellen Chrome ones. You just stick a USB-C cable in here and it goes to the light. I believe that I have the cables in this case over here. So they're sitting in there and they're great um, for charging these up. And you can use them while they're plugged in the wall, which is fantastic, so you never stop shooting. Um, this is my backup, backup PC cable to um, 1 18th, whatever it is that's on the bottom of these lights, so that um, the ELB 500, so that I can plug this into the ELB 500 hardwired and <laughs> go to the camera. I'm laughing because I have six things in here that can make the flash fire and the idea that the two Canon transmitters and the Nikon transmitter, which I can use on my camera, plus the two generics, which I can also use on my camera, would fail before I use this. Nevertheless, it's here. So isn't that fun? I have some clips that I can use to clip clothing uh, or anything that I need with mini A clamps. Um, just for styling, I have these larger clips, and these larger clips will mount to a, a grip head. So essentially, what I will do is take a grip head, a double-ended stud, and I'll stick this on here. And then I can put this clip on here. And now, this will allow me to hold a lot of things, like a reflector or foam core, in any position I want and I can put it on a light stand and then I can just adjust this to change the pitch. <laughs> it's a little hard to do uh, with it not on the stand, but hopefully you get the idea and then the jaws just let me hold it in place there. So this is a great uh, bit of grip equipment that I think any case should have. In fact, I have two of them. So that concludes everything that I have in the case. So now let's talk about how I'm gonna get it to the airport and on the plane. So I take my clothing bag with a strap on it and I attach it to the top handle of the Tenba Air Attaché 3220W. And then I put my Tenba bag for my camera on top of it. And this allows me to move three bags at once all on wheels. And then with the other hand, I will move um, the, uh, the SKB case with all of my light modifiers on it. A uh, little side note, um, it is a very tight fit onto uh, between the top handle of this air attache case and uh, my messenger camera bag. And so I always make sure that I use my right hand for that so that I don't accidentally take my wedding ring off um, <laughs> when I'm taking my hand on and off of, of the case. So once I get my bags up to the ticket counter, that's where the little trick comes in. So almost all airlines have a policy for media bags. So traditionally they think that it's members of the media who are traveling with all of their video equipment to go cover the next big story. But many of them in the fine print have some information there about video production companies and that sort of thing. And they will almost always, I, from what I hear, allow photographers to 
uh, check their bags as media. So, in fact, I always fly Southwest because they have a very generous media bag policy. And I'll paraphrase it, but I'll put the actual policy up on the screen. It says that members of the media or video production companies can check um, their bags uh, for free, the first two bags for free, and that third bags are $75, and that media bags are not subject to weight or size restrictions. Of course, you can't check anything over about the size of the SKB case, and you can't check anything over 100 pounds, but anything up to that level, you can check it for free on Southwest, provided it's your first two bags, and you prevent, present them with uh, one of these. So back in the day, I was a full-time photojournalist, and so I still have my credentials from about 10 years ago, give or take. And this will allow me, I always show this to the people at the Southwest counter, and almost all of the time, they acknowledge um, that I qualify for the rule and they check my bags for free. Now on occasion, they've, the person has been new or they've been unaware of the policy and they've had to ask their supervisor and then it normally gets cleared up and they just end up punching like 30 buttons on the computer. A very few times I've had to argue with them nicely and show them the policy and they've always acquiesced to it. It does also say that part about the video production companies. So I have put that phrase, a video production company, on my business cards as sort of a fail safe in case someday I forget these cards. I've never tried it, but maybe I'm gonna have to uh, one of these days. So my friend, however, swears um, that he's done this and it's worked every time on multiple airlines. He signed up for a membership for ASMP, the American Society of Media Photographers. And by doing so, they give you a press credential, which you can use to present at any airline counter. And he said he's flown on multiple airlines in the US and they've all accepted it and they've all let him check his bags at the media rate. Now for me, I can get all of my stuff into two bags and I can make it work. And so the best option for me that's affordable is to fly on Southwest. For you, if maybe you need to fly with three or four bags, it might be more affordable for you to fly on another airline, let's say like American. And I remember a few times back in the day, I would actually upgrade to first class so that I could check 70 pound bags for free. And so some little trick might like that might be the best in your situation. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And as always, stay safe, travel safe, and have a great day.